What would you say to the women who say, I'm not going to settle? Good. Mm -hmm. Here for you. I yeah. don't settle. Yeah. Like, I would never settle. But the reason I don't settle is my own life is so extraordinary. What if you have a man who has those qualities, but he's just not on the same level as you? Oh, 100%, yeah. As you long would. as he wasn't like okay. looking for me to support him. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 No, okay. 100%, yeah. Like, I've got guys that've got their own private jets. Like, wow. we're talking like that level of success. Okay. Ultra high net worth. Is Andrew Tate there? Do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, guys, welcome back to another episode on my channel. I'm sitting in this spot, which means, which means... I've got a great conversation lined up for you today. You know, on this channel, we like to talk about all things dating and relationships and seeing what we can do to attract the kind of person we want. So without further ado, please welcome Miss Annalie Howling to the show. Oh, thank you so much. How are you today? I am amazing. Yeah. yeah. I'm really, I'm excited. I've been watching you, as you know, for ages. So oh, I, I think you it. and I are going to have a an exciting, interesting, and quite a spicy conversation. A hundred percent. I mean, those of you, I'm sure you've seen her face pop up, but you also bring incredible value to the space. Thank and I you. remember coming across your content. I was like, I need to get this woman on <laughs> for sure. Cause she knows what she's talking about. Um, but yeah, so I always like to start, tell us your age or your age range, mm -hmm. asking a lady her age. And one thing a guy should know about you if he wants to take you on a date. Ooh, so I am 42 and a half, nearly 43. I am. Yeah, so 42, uh, nearly 43. Um, what would a man need to know if he's going on a date with me? Order me a spicy margs. Ooh, a spicy margs. Spicy margarita. Okay. There, yeah. Okay. Is that is that your go-to drink when you're kind of like wanna Yeah, I like it. It makes me think about holidays and you know, it's just it, it makes me think sort of of joy and happiness. Of course. And what's one thing that on a when you go on a date with a guy, what's one thing you look out for yourself that you're like, this is what I like in a man? So I like uh so I'm gonna answer that in two parts. One thing mm -hmm. I try and look out for is the I'm being myself. I'm actually quite shy, which is, really? yeah, it's always really surprising yeah. so to, to men and people on a date in romantic, same so romantic situation, yes. especially if I am actually quite interested in somebody. Mm. And so something that I've learned over time is to try and really check in with that and make sure that I am, you know, am I regulated? Am I being myself? Like, Am I, and if I'm feeling a bit anxious or nervous, I'm getting much better, shall we say, just announcing that. Oh, so you'll just tell the I'll guy I'm like, shy. Hey. I'm actually like, I'm a little bit shy. So just give me a minute. Like, because I, I, I know I can come off as being quite cold. Ah. I, I know that it can come off as being a little bit standoffish and I don't mean it to be at all. It's just, I can be a little bit overwhelmed initially. Mm, so right. uh, I've become, call it better, just call it more authentic at saying that I, I know I might come off as being a little bit cold to start with. Just give me a minute. Let the spicy margarita to kick in. Yeah, yeah, of uh, course. I'm just, you know, I can be a little bit shy to start with. So I'm not an ice queen. Interesting. And to do that on a first date, because when you, if you say to someone like, oh, just so you know, I'm a, feeling a bit shy or mm. whatever, that's quite vulnerable. Yeah. So would you, would you always be kind of that forthcoming, sharing that with a guy if you're feeling that way in the moment? Or does it depend on the kind of energy you've gotten from him to see if he can provide a space for you to be that vulnerable. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. So I'd say uh, it probably is more about whether I am quite interested in them or not. So if mm. I can see that there's not really a connection, I might, I'm, I'm interested in people. I think like with my job, I'm fascinated by people. So if yes. I'm maybe meeting up with somebody and I'm like, oh, do you know what? I don't see this as being a romantic connection, but let's see what I can get out of the evening for conversation or learning about another person. So I'll yes. sort of treat the evening as, yeah, I'm going to really try and learn and connect with this person. Maybe there's a friendship. Mm. But if I am... Um, attracted to them or I think there's romantic possibility, yes. then absolutely I want to try. And this is something that has definitely been different in being older yes. and knowing about myself and maybe having the confidence to say it because I would not have done that in my 20s. I would have been too much of a chameleon or I would have been shy and nervous, but I wouldn't have had the courage to be able to say, I'm feeling shy and nervous. I would have like tried to go along with it or hide it or mask it or all the other stuff that, yes. you know, we do. Yes. Uh, and what I've learned is that just sets everything off on the wrong foot. Mm, yeah. Well, how, what, from that experience, what does that paint to men in your experience? Uh, I think that to be honest, they may not notice, especially if it's very early, you know, they just assume that you're the, you know, that you're presenting who you are. Yes. Um, but what, is evidently happening is if I'm not fully relaxed, that mm. it's going to kick off that person's nervous system. You know, whether mm. you're on the surface having a really great conversation and maybe the attraction's going and maybe the eye contact's there and all the stuff. Yes. But if I'm not fully in my body, which mm. is if I'm not relaxed, I'm not in my body, yes. then I'm probably kicking off quite a 
vibe to somebody else and he right. may be like she seems nice but she's you know maybe not there's something there that's yeah. kind of making me kind of be hesitant and it works both ways and you see it very quickly in men as yes. well so i can see very quickly when if i'm out on a date with somebody when they're not being themselves when they're maybe trying to say things they think i want to hear interesting and i think many women would have this experience so what can you what do you see that makes you go this guy's just trying to appease to what he thinks i want as opposed to show me who he is so inconsistency is the um you know because mm. let's say you've uh however you've met them maybe you've met them through a friend or uh you've i don't know met them in some social context or whatever so you've probably had some time touch points, even if you met online and it was messaging or something like that, maybe a phone call, you've had some touch points to mm. speak to this person. Yes. So then if you see them face to face and there's some inconsistency in other things, maybe they put on a dating profile or a friend told you about them. Oh, no, they, they live here and that was their kids or, you know, whatever. Right. And then you start having a conversation with them and there's some inconsistency start coming up and they maybe seem a little bit if it's too good to be true as well, like they're trying to present this kind of, oh, I love that as well. And I yeah. do this too. And you're like, oh, when? And you're like, <laughs> right now. <laughs> okay, okay. So, yes. Interesting. And it's funny because it almost comes across as a bit of a yes man, which I I think most women actually don't find attractive. It's so unattractive. Like just a guy who's just going to say yes to you all it's the time. So unattractive. <laughs> what, what are some of the things that guys lie about to try and Oof. appear better than they are in a date with women. So again, I think this is like me speaking in 40s and I'll try and I'll try and remember back yeah. a couple of decades back, but now currently things kids. I had one man actually lie about having children. What? <laughs> yes. And not even just lie. Do you not lie. think she's going to find out at some point? But this is amazing. So not even just lie, like made this huge sorrow for story about how him and his ex-wife who turned out wasn't that much of an ex-wife as well. Um, oh. They'd had all these failed rounds of IVF and it was so sad. And you're like, oh, that is really sad. That's really awful. And that was the reason that they broke up and they couldn't have children. And I've got lots of friends that are in that space, right? Yeah. Who are struggling fertility. And so it's very real yes. and it's hugely sad. Yes. And you can really see how that would put a massive strain on relationship. And so, you know, you're like, right, okay. And then, and I, I knew something was off. So I didn't really go out. I think I went out with him twice mm. to dinner and it was just something wasn't quite right. And trust your intuition as well. So something wasn't quite right right yes and then it oh, i've got something i must tell you i've got something i must say i'm like here we go like and he was like oh i actually do have two children then he went and i really like them <laughs> <laughs> one would hope so I mean <laughs> like, but the strangest what? thing for me and i said this i'm like but you know i'm a mother like yeah you know you know i'm a mother it's not going to be that would absolutely not be a showstopper for me if anything I wouldn't actually probably want to date a man that doesn't have kids. I think there sure. needs to be um, an element of understanding. And, you know, my commitment is with her. That For me, I think there's just sort of some more common ground and, uh, and You're more on a similar frequency. Yeah, because my time of... is, it needs to go to her as a priority. Yes. And again, I have dated some guys that don't have children and not to say it wouldn't ever work, but the mm. men that I personally have dated that don't have children, they cannot be my priority in relationship. And I think there's maybe a little bit of uh, just disconnect there. So yeah. yes, that was one uh, excellent lie. Um, wow. Oh my God, steroid use, drug use, uh yeah, there's there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff. I'd say that's that's probably the the youngest yeah. Stuff. And the thing is, I do I do hear this from women where they find out that a guy has lied about something significant like kids, like income, oh, being married, like being married, being married, yeah. and stuff like that. And I just think, I think that almost shows. I think where his intentions lie, because I think if he's looking at a woman, he's going, okay, I'm, I actually see a future with you. Mm. Then he knows at some point you're going to find out what the truth is. So I think, is there an element of a guy lying about something significant? Could that be a sign that he's just looking for something short term? So I have like a sort of two prong theory on this. Yeah. I think that we know um, the number one fear is rejection. Yes. Right? So a lot of reason that men and women are not you know, why are people not approaching us in bars anymore? We're so afraid of being rejected. And, mm. you know, if you try to, <laughs> so it's someone like approaching me and then I'm shy and standoffish and cold. It's like, you know, like, <laughs> Course, <laughs> like yeah. I know I'm, I don't always have the most open, like, come and talk to me, like vibe that I yeah, give off. Yeah, of um, course. I, because I get approached a lot mm. and they are always married. 
always. I've heard this before. Now, my fan theory that I've sort of uh, working on around rejection. Yes. There's no risk because you're probably quite unhappy in your marriage because you wouldn't be doing what you're doing and you're wildly disrespecting your wife. Yes. Now, who, whatever the situation may be, and she may be the most wicked witch ever, but you're still there, right? Yes. For whatever reason. You're not Very available. True. You're not emotionally available. You're not actually single. Mm. So you approaching women, doesn't matter if I reject you or not. Mm, because he still has a relationship Correct. to fall on. Correct. So there's so, not the same drop. You know, it's like, oh, I was just trying my luck, chancing my arm. Yeah. You know, it's like, saints. oh, I'm I'm chancing for something extracurricular, not she's rejecting me. She's rejecting my potential to have right. a future family or now, something. Now, if it happened to work out, and I do think there are a lot of people out there that look for a, uh, I'm unhappy where I am. So it's better for me to find something else to jump to rather than work on myself, rather than being alone. People mm. are very, very afraid of being alone with themselves. Mm. Totally different to being lonely. Yes. And I think a lot of people use dating, sex, relationship as a way of band-aiding and also validation. Again, everything to avoid being alone with yourself. So, <laughs> so true. this is, so yeah, my theory on, on the people that are in relationship, absolutely people are, chancing it you know yes. because kind of i think there's a bit of ego i think there's a bit of can i still do that can i still do have i still got it yeah I, have I still got it i think there's a little bit of that definitely but the people that are in relationship and are unhappy i think they're approaching other people because they've got this backup you know there's they're not yes. really being rejected they're not really failing yeah also there's also this other element of and that this doesn't condone it but there's also this other element i hear this and i've have I found this? Yeah, I found this myself and from guys all the time. Where the second they're in a relationship, suddenly women come out of the woodworks. So like they're just more attractive. What is that? So obviously it happens both all ways, both ways. I okay. think there is a so you know, me and the girls talk about it all the time and female clients and things like that. I think there is an element of can I? Will will they? Will they still respond? Will they still respond to me? So is that more of a validation for the power woman? kick, like right. a you know, like a little a little ego boost in there? Like will they still? You know, I know they're in relationship, yeah, um, but I'm going to just drop a text in. Will they reply? You know, there's like right. so many times that maybe it's been ignored, and then you get them to bite. Like a friend of mine had this recently, childhood sweetheart. They dated for a really long time, um, and then obviously like sliding doors moments were in different relationships and marriages and those sorts of things. Have ended up kind of back at a similar point. Yes, he has pursued her relentlessly for years, and I really do mean like twenty odd years. Okay, wow. messaging, messaging, messaging. She kind of wasn't replying at all ended up saying like, okay, do you know what? We can just be friends. We've got a long history, blah, blah, blah. Oh my goodness. Great, great, great. Thinks the door's open. Calling her, calling her, calling her. I mean, like a bit mad, like, you yeah. know, kind of, oh, this is so exciting. I can't believe it. Finally, finally. And she's like, oh, all right, well, you, you seem to think there's something amazing here. Like maybe I should be open to this. Yes. As soon as she did that, literally nothing. Oh, he was like. I mean, ghost. Really? Yeah. And she hadn't heard from him since? No. I mean, obviously I've been like, block him. Yeah. Block him. You know? Wow. Yep. And I think in that one, it's a, I don't necessarily want you. I'm maybe even in another relationship, but we've got all this history and I want to know that I could if I wanted to. It's almost like he wanted to gain the power yeah. that she probably had in the beginning when he was approaching her and she's like, I'm not really feeling this. And now years have gone by and he's like, now I'm almost rejecting you. Interesting. How much, how much do you think people do date from a place of wanting to have leverage, wanting to have the power? I think quite a lot actually. Mm. And I don't necessarily think that's like Machiavelli or manipulative in intention. Mm. I think a lot of that comes from insecurity. Yes. So yes. I, you could say, well, that in itself is manipulative if you're consciously doing it for that. Right. But I think a lot of people are very, very insecure and have not done work on themselves to find a place of security again in the self. And I'll bang on about this, but like truly being all right 
on your own. Okay. Yes, yes. And it's very different to being like, love yourself first. And, you know, I believe in the power of relationship and connection. Our mm. lives are richer for it. Amen. And I really do agree to that. But I also know that you have to get to a place where your benchmark is high enough that you don't accept anything less than. Mm. So it has to be, you have to add to my life. You have to add to my already good life. I can't be looking for a relationship because I don't feel financially secure or I can't yes. be looking to a relationship because I feel unattractive or, you know, I'm lonely. I haven't got any friends that I haven't nurtured, you know, because I lose myself in every relationship I go into. So I better get another relationship because I haven't got a social life. Like yes. those are not good reasons, you yes. know? So that's what I mean when I talk about, are you, you know, happy alone? But yeah, I think a lot of people are maybe in one of those situations I've just listed, I'm unhappy in my job. Mm. Oh, there's this guy and he's got this like, you know, we could move to Dubai or like yes. there's something like that. And that would get me out of this horrible job. Or um, this person's got this brilliant social life and all these great connections. It's like the lifestyle that this person can bring for them. It's a piece of you that's missing that you haven't yet addressed or worked on for yourself that I think we want to almost outsource to relationship and to a partner. And mm. then obviously what happens is that's unequal. You know, it's like me kind of going full circle back. But the reason I I want to try and even say that I can be quite shy and mm. be open at the beginning is I don't want to be masking parts of me and literally setting off on the wrong foot. Yes. Yeah. Because that's, it's not sustainable long-term mm -mm. if you're, if you're not, if you're trying to show up as something that you're not. Yeah. Um, one thing you touched on, which I think is really interesting about the bar, the standard and in terms of what you think, I think that for a lot of women, I think the standard of men that they want what I call, I always say there's caliber versus quality. Mm -hmm. The caliber of man is his status, economic position, his influence, etc. The quality of a man is his character. Is he generous with his time? Does he show real intention? Does he show real investment? Mm -hmm. um, is he considered all of that things? You can have a guy who's very high caliber, but very low quality. And equally, you can have a guy who's maybe on the low caliber side, but very high quality. Mm -hmm. I think for a lot of women, I think their standards for the caliber of men that they want has come up here. But because he's so hard to find, when they do find that, they accept the quality down here mm. in terms of his level of investment, in terms of what they're willing to accept from this man. And so when you talk about the standard, what are you referring to if I'm talking about those two paradigms? So what I'm, and I completely agree with what you said, and I love how you phrased that. Mm. Uh, it made me think, have you seen the crazy hot matrix? You've no, seen I that. We'll no. have to link it. So it's it's a very funny old clip about um basically it's hilarious. I'll send it to you. It's like it's like a finance dudes thing, but it's it's old fashioned. And they okay. do it for they do it so it's about guys, what they're looking for in a woman. Yes. So you know, if she's like a ten out of ten hot, she's like a ten crazy. Oh, I think the I have crazy hot. Is it, um, older white bald guy. <laughs> yeah, it's glasses. funny. But, I have but they seen do that. it for they do it the other way around. He does it for women about what they're looking for in a man. And you're yes. either wealthy or attractive. Like so yeah, it's yeah. like the caliber. It's quite it reminded me of that. We'll have to link it. It's funny. Okay. Um, yeah, I've seen that. So what it, what it makes, so I love what you're saying. And I think what's interesting is it's like a pen, I always say the pendulum always swings. So mm. if I was, let's give an example, I'm in a really crappy job that I hate. Mm -hmm. I've had a succession of shitty relationships. Mm. I feel like my entire peer group are moving ahead of me. So my friends are getting married, moving in together. She's yep. got a nice boyfriend with a nice car. Yes. Um, you know, things are getting easier all around me. And here's me. And I'm like, well, this isn't working out as I thought it would. And mm. I don't feel I've got the energy, the, you know, maybe I'm low on, on joy and happiness and a few other areas. And again, rather than wanting to do it myself and accepting that my paths may be a bit different and yes. potentially a bit harder or going in a slightly different direction, I want to outsource my joy to you. Mm. And so I'm probably going to pick someone, snakes and ladders, who's going to take me from two to a hundred quicker. Right. Do I, in that moment, am I choosing if you're going to be kind to my heart and consistent and not lie to me? Or am I like, I want the BMW and the, yes. you know, and the big diamond and everything else? Like, I mean, let's be honest here. Maybe I'm thinking, well, you're an easy, I like you. We've got yes. this tick, tick, tick. And I, you know, I'm thinking again to being twenties yes. when there's a lot of pressure on to, well, we've been together for 18 months. So now's the time, you know, yeah. everyone else is doing it. We might as well. And on paper, it's a really good fit. So, mm. but as you say, that's, that person can be quite empty on like what I would say more of a soul connection and, yes. All I can tell you is as a woman who's divorced and in her forties and has clients all the time and mm. everything else. And my ex and I get on very, very well and we co-parent beautifully. Mm. Thank goodness. But yeah. you the plans that you're making on 
you know, the factors that you're trying to click together at that time in life do not serve you moving forward. And any differences that you may have in exactly those those categories, like, are you going to care for my heart? How do you show up for me? What space do you hold for me? How do we communicate? Yes. How do we connect? 100%. You put life in there and life happens. Children, death, yes. changes, job, anything like that. Any tiny difference of yours is a magnifying glass goes on that. Mm. So it might be great that you had stuff, yes. but that ain't going to see you through when life happens. 100%. And I think especially because human beings, we always acclimatize to our environment. Mm. So it's like buying a new car. When you buy that new car, you're like, I'll drive anywhere, anywhere, anytime. Because I want to show this new car off. I'm feeling good in it. Eight months down the line, you still like your car, but you're not just going to run to the shops to get some breads just so you can drive. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So we always acclimatize to our lifestyle. And then I think what happens or what can happen is, I don't know, maybe a woman has chosen a guy because he is of that caliber. But then once she's acclimatized, that's when all the other things that maybe were there or weren't there just become very present and very prevalent and focus of the relationship for her. Cause she's used to being in the house and the cars and going to these certain events and stuff like that. Um, what is, what would you say to the women who say, I'm not going to settle? Good. Mm -hmm. Here for you. I yeah. don't settle. Yeah. Like I would never settle, but the reason I don't settle is my own life is so extraordinary. So right. it's a, that's what I would say is like, absolutely don't settle. But in the, pursuit of not settling and mm. finding the right partner for you that again really complements where you are make sure that your own benchmark your own life is of such a standard mm. that is adding to so mm. you know I've got a lovely house yeah. i've got a great life got my girl here we do you know got great friends do everything that i want to do yes any partner in my life is adding to so there's not a- In, this, in those metrics though? No, no, Because you've no. described like a, a beautiful lifestyle yeah, that you've no, built no, no, for Yeah, no, no, that's what I'm saying. So, you know, am I settling as in, I'm not going to start financially supporting someone personally. I expect them mm. to meet me where I am. That's that's what I mean. So okay. uh, I'm not going to be, that's the life I've created for myself. So yep. slightly different lens and I have those responsibilities, but absolutely I would not settle. And for me, it's someone that's got a good work ethic, is, is similar minded to me. Like I've made all of this myself. This yep. is not a, um, I'm not from old money or anything like that. You know, this yes. is, this is on, I work every single day. There's not yes. a day I don't do. I'm sure you do. There's not yes. a day I don't do something. There's never a day that I'm not uh, even looking on an email or checking in with something or, mm. and I'm happy with that. And I grind and it's, it's fine. Yes. So for me, looking to a partner that it's someone that has also done similar. I wouldn't get on well with somebody that is a bit lazy, you know, a bit like sure. leaving things to chance. But those again are the values that are, would need to align up in relationships. So to me, that's not settling. It's someone that's driven, mm. joyful, optimistic, loving, yes. uh, honest, consistent. Yes. Yes. And that doesn't sound like a very sexy word, yes. but consistency is the most important thing for me. And, and that is what goes through all of these elements. Yeah. I hear that. So I'm going to challenge you a bit. Okay. What if you have a man who has those qualities, but he's just not on the same level as you? So let's say, for example, you meet a guy who, for example, let's say he's, um, let's say he's a plumber. Mm -hmm. He works 10 hour days, works hard, earns an average salary, whatever it is. So maybe he's not driving a Porsche, but he's driving a Honda. Mm. Maybe he doesn't have a house. Maybe he has a, a one studio bed or something. So, and he has those qualities. He's honest, he's intentional, he's consistent, he's considerate. So the quality of character is there and he has the qualities in terms of work ethics. It's just that the path or industry he's chosen, at least his level is not on the same as yours. Would you give that guy a chance? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. As you long would. as he wasn't like okay. looking for me to support him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, okay. hundred percent. Yes. Because I think a lot of women wouldn't. Right. Because okay. they want a man who's their level. So like, like you said, like, well, if I've got my own house, he has to own his own home no, too. No, as long as they're not like, you know, as long as it's obviously not someone being like, oh, you, to, to the other point, like, oh, she can help me out, snakes and ladders, like by being okay. with her, I can get up there. And okay. actually a really good friend of mine's daughter, um, to tell a story to your audience, yes. mid twenties, very well off family, daughter of. Mm -hmm. So met her now, um, boyfriend and he is a, uh, Sparky. 
So, okay. like, brilliant and was a little, not controversial, but, you know, maybe not what they had anticipated. Private school education, boarding schools, all the rest of it, you know, yes, yes. perhaps not what they'd anticipated for her. Yes. Loveliest guy in the universe. He now, they've developed both of their houses, like, sold on, got a beautiful baby. She's mm. found a huge success in social media mm. because of just happened to be putting stuff out there. Hasn't had to return to her job in PR. They yeah. have the happiest relationship, the happiest life. They're making more money than mm. anybody that, if you picked, you know, the guy with the car mm -hmm. would be because he works so blooming hard, you know, yes. for him and the baby. Yes. And, yeah, and they've developed these two properties, buying another one. So mm. do not, you know, and again, that's work ethic work and ethic. the kind of person he is he shows up every day he puts them first yes. like i mean bless him he's working literally every day you know out on a saturday everything else and mm. they are making this beautiful life for themselves and they will be far ahead of everybody else yeah so interesting i think it's how do we get past i think for guys for a lot of guys it's you know not making sure looks isn't everything though of course that's important and equally a woman that the status isn't everything, but then the qualities almost, I guess that's what ambition comes into. Cause ambition, ambition essentially means you don't have to be successful now, but success is in your future. Hmm. Does that make sense? Um, there's one thing I wanted to ask you actually, I've got quite a few things. Um, What's the biggest way people self-sabotage themselves? For oh my goodness. So I think, so we've got this thing go called there. the upper limit. Okay. which is, is a brilliant book if anyone wants to read it. And when I'm recommending a book, it's like this big, so everyone can read it, right? It's not okay. a long one. And it's called um, The Big Leap by a guy called Gay Hendricks. It's kind of old school, but it's so good about talking about when we self-sabotage. Mm. So basically we will have some underlying limiting beliefs that we've had from childhood. Yep. Now, when I grew up, there would be sayings in my household, such as, well, that sounds too good to be true when something, you know, oh, this has happened at school. Okay. Oh, that sounds too good to be true. You know, I've been picked for this. Oh, well, good things don't come easily. You know, yes. money, money doesn't grow on trees. Yes. Um, so which tells you that it's really hard to get money. That's so expensive. It's so expensive to look after you. It tells you that having money is hard. Mm. So for example, we pick up on subconsciously, like my daughter who's here is seven. Yes. So she picks up unconsciously those sorts of sayings and things which obviously I try and be careful about you know yes. until she's seven and they become these kind of inherent beliefs yes. now we then become grown-ups and start having autonomy and living our life and then you meet a beautiful woman who mm. is intelligent and consistent and awesome and open-hearted and pure soul and yes. challenges you in the right ways and makes you feel secure and loved in the other ways yes and you go oh it's too good to be true Mm, and yes. so and then you get a great job and it just walked in the door yeah and you didn't have to work for it and they yes. just went we want him i've seen him i've seen him his like screen stuff i yes. want him don't even want to audition him straight through yeah and you're like what and they're gonna pay you this huge thing and you're like it's true that's what? happened once or twice right yeah and you're and so there must be something up with that so these yeah. are these underlying beliefs that we have so what happens is we get to what we call our upper limit we start getting triggered by these unconscious sort of subconscious limiting beliefs that we have mm. then we because we don't want to get hurt start self-sabotaging so that's when mm. you reply to the text from your ex even though you never normally would because yes. you're like oh well this is gonna fail anyway so I, or, or then you're like go to your agent well actually go back and ask them this even though the offer's amazing and it's brilliant but you're like you always want to poke the bear. Yeah. Kind of like trying to, you start an argument. Yeah. That's when we start rows with people in romantic relationships. So is it almost the reason people do that is because it seems so good to be true. It's almost them trying to stop themselves from believing in it. Should it fail, then they're not as a heartbroken. Does Basically, that make sense? Basically, yes, because you've been conditioned with that belief since childhood. Right. Because you've been told that nothing can be that easy. Yeah. You know, so if you think about it, we've been told that, nothing good comes easily and that's too good to be true. So you've been mm, told that isn't possible. Right. So then when you start experiencing this thing, which is not possible because you've been told that and that's yeah. your underlying belief, we become incredibly uncomfortable, probably quite triggered. Yes. And so absolutely, I don't want to fall from there, rejection. Of course. That yeah, is too, yeah, yeah. That's too great a fall. I'd rather bring myself down a couple of levels. Yes. There's like quite a lot of evidence around sort of say like um, people that have made a lot of money, right? Let's just say you've, you know, you've grown up maybe um, very underprivileged and mm. you've ended up maybe working on a desk, you know, trading, something like that, and loads of money. Mm. And it's quite well documented. There's been quite a lot of studies around it that people, not everyone, but some people will almost 
gamble, um, keep buying houses, you know, yeah. change your car every five minutes. Like, yeah. because it's almost more comfortable to, to get rid of it yes. than it is to, to try and embody or live at that level. And that can be your inner critic, like imposter syndrome. You don't deserve this. They're going to find you out in one minute and send you back to the council estate, wherever. Yes. So it's actually easier for you to sabotage and make poor financial choices to get yourself down to a more comfortable level. So in relationship, mm. let's say you get your 10, yes. all the things you're manifesting, you're working towards, you're working on yourself, you're doing all the stuff, you get your 10 yeah. and you're going to be triggered. Like your clients work with you, you you know that, you get that all the time. Yeah, yeah. You are going to be triggered in a healthy relationship in a yes. different way than you will to a toxic one, but you will be triggered. Yes. And the triggers are these like, subconscious beliefs often and we are the ones that need to start taking responsibility here for our stuff and the healing that needs to be done for right. ourselves and is there a is there a common way in your experience that you've seen how men will self-sabotage for with a woman that is really great and maybe how a woman would self-sabotage because she's really really great man and it's hard for her to accept that yeah so i think women tend to poke the bear more. So it seems to be, so, and again, potentially if we have not fully shown up and there's a lot of reason that women don't, so I'm not advocating one way or the other, but there's a, sure. a lot of conditioning about being a good girl mm. and, you know, um, don't make a scene and don't make a fast. And I don't want to be seen to be too much. Mm. And so I'm maybe trying to be a bit more of a chameleon with you. And then we get to a point in the relationship and perhaps then I'm going to start taking up some more space, yes. but I might not do that skillfully. Right. So maybe it's starting a row. Maybe I challenge something that I before said I was enjoyed or, or whatever, you know, yeah. or like, or you can become a little bit resentful because you are, and again, you got to look, is this responsibility or not? Maybe I think you're not, um, asking me a certain thing or you're making presumptions or always doing things. I'm always seeing your family and friends and mm, not mine, you know, but mm, I was happy with that in the beginning. Yes, Do you know what I mean? So, yes. so, and then that can build as resentment. I think again, women, I'm being very generalistic, but sure. I think we can struggle early on with communicating our needs. And I mean that in all regards, sexually everywhere. Mm. And I, I do really think a lot of this is people pleasing, conditioning, some some trauma in there often as well. Mm. Um, and so we get to a point in relationship where maybe I'm more comfortable and confident, the self-sabotage is maybe kicking in. So I'm going to poke you perhaps yes. a little bit to sort of, you know, perhaps I'm feeling a bit of resentment kicking in because I wasn't naming my needs. So I'm going to try and get back at you in yes. some way. And then I think men, if they're not feeling appreciated. Facts. Number one, yeah. I have a lot of male clients. It's true. Life hack. Yes. <laughs> every man, I'm not saying women don't. Yep. Every man wants to feel appreciated. 100%. And it's not a lot. It's not a lot. It really doesn't take that much. No. It's so true. I was literally, it's so fun. This was just before you came. I was talking to my producer, King, and we're talking exactly this. And the analogy I gave was, imagine if you have a car right? Which is the guy and he's in the driver's seat and he's taking you from A to B. That is him serving you. So mm -hmm. whether that's taking you out, whether that's being there for, you know, whatever you need to be there for, whether that's making you feel safe and provided and protected, that's him serving you, the things he does. The fuel for that car is gratitude. Mm -hmm. The more gratitude and appreciation you have for a man, the more he goes, I want to do more to serve you. Mm -hmm. That's going to serve us. And it's such a big thing. And the thing is, I think it really doesn't take that much. No. Just um, be like, thanks, babe. I really appreciate you getting this. She's like, okay, I'm going to do more. Yeah. It's, <laughs> do you know it's, I mean? it's I've got a lot of male clients, private clients, very, very successful. Mm. Like I've got guys that have got their own private jets. Like wow. we're talking like that level of success. Okay. Ultra high net worth. Is Andrew Tate there? Do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to have him as one of my clients. He used to follow me on Instagram when he was allowed on Instagram. I'd love to have him as one no of my clients. No way. Yeah. And then I got a load of grief for it. I'm like, I did, what? <laughs> I got a good show of that. <laughs> Um, yes. But yeah, I would love to have him as a client. But yeah, so ultra high net worths. They've got their own private jets, all sorts of stuff. Mm. Also got their own problems. But in all of those situations where there's been issues in relationships, still a lack of appreciation, you know? And, mm. and, and again, I think sometimes we maybe don't appreciate the, the pressure on guys, you yeah. know? So let's just say we're going to get married and have, and we've got a young family or something like that. Mm. There's a huge amount of responsibility. You can't lose your job. Yep. You can't change your job. You can't mm. suddenly go, I found my purpose. I'm going to be a shaman. Sorry, babe. Yeah. <laughs> got the mortgage. We've got responsibilities yeah. now. Sorry, it's love. true. No, like that's on you for the next 25 years. Cause yeah. we just signed up to this. Yes. And then 
are we going to do private school? Are we going to do this? I want three holidays a year, by the way. And also da, 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 da. And yeah. I mean, I'm giving like, again, I, and I'm so girl code, you know, and I run my own life myself. So like this is, but I'm giving an example I yes. see from clients and men don't mind that. Like I think mm. there is that kind of hunter gatherer, like protector. I think a lot of men like the role of being a protector. Yes. I'm quite traditional in relationship in that I quite like that. I like to be in my feminine. So yes. I quite like that sense. I'm, I'm very alpha most of the time. So it's yes. nice to have some time off. Read some in time relationship. off, Serge, I hear that. But there is a, a I think it's so simple just to say, I really see what you've done mm. for us. Yeah. Thank you. You know, I know that it's our money and that we're all doing this together, but I really do appreciate that you've been like doing this. And I know you don't always love being at work every day, mm. but it's making such a difference to us and our family. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Like, that it makes a huge difference. It makes someone feel seen. Yes. Of course, all we want to be is seen and heard for who we really are. So true. And what do you think is the equivalent for women for them to feel seen in a relationship so and there's, dating? It, there's definitely a, it's very similar because mm -hmm. you do, and, and I think love languages is helpful here, but not everything. Mm. So um, people tend to, you know, we do the love languages quiz. I know you know all about it. And, yes. you know, we find out, oh, I'm acts of service and your gifts or whatever. Yeah. What people don't realize is we also try and show love in our love language. So true. It might not be your partner's. And again, mm. being hyper stereotypical, most men are acts of service. Yes. Maybe words of affirmation, usually quality time. Please put your goddamn phone down. And yes. Just look at me, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whereas women might be, you know, m maybe we're more like gifts, as in like, I saw this at the shop and got it for you. Not, yes. you know, I'm sending you roses and putting you in a suite every five minutes and, you know, whatever else. But sure. I think to try and remember that you're likely to be demonstrating in your own love language and so is your partner. And so communicating if yours is different. Yes. I think most men want to connect to us really deeply. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think most women struggle to receive. Mm. I mean that sexually. I mean that in pleasure. I mean that in compliments. I mean that in help. I mean that in relationship. You know, there are some things that I think we can lean into, like I'd like you to buy me dinner or something like that, but that's yeah. almost become a prerequisite in some regards. I'm giving, yes. I'm kind of giving like an Instagram overview here of what, you know, very true. but I think it's very difficult for women to really lean into, are you going to hold me? Yeah. In what I'm going through right now, like yes. in life, when life happens, can I, yes. can I rely on you? Can I fully open myself up to you in mm. all the ways and just receive from you and be in my feminine, be in very, this space. Very true. And I mean, you know, I've said this before, it's even in our biology, mm. the feminine receives the man mm. into her, mm. right? Literally the man gives her the seed. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I think, how much do you think, um, how much do you think that self narrative of, I have to be a strong independent woman that I can't, I can't show that I would like a man to take a space in my life to elevate us in romantically, spiritually, emotionally, because there's, I have to be a girl boss, babe. And I have to show that I'm strong and independent and all of this. How much does that narrative play into her not allowing to receive from a man? I think so much. And let's add in a few more. Treat them mean to keep them keen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's add in a few more, you know, yeah. like uh, you look at any of the narratives, thankfully not yours, yeah. but like you look at any, no, Appreciate honestly, it. thankfully Appreciate not yours, <laughs> but, you, but you look at any of the narratives around keeping a man, what to do. Yes. Like I had a client, honestly, I had a client the other day mm. and I'm going to be careful what I say here, but they <laughs> told me that they were chatting to somebody online and were trying to arrange a date because they were in a different country and they only had a few days. So they flew out and really wanted to go out and date with this person. Mm. And they said- and kind of fair play for admitting it, but they were like, so I was Googling like how to manipulate someone into what to send in a text to manipulate them to get them to say yes. Jeez. Right. <laughs> right. So, that's so you think that that's like, that not, obviously that's not the only person because there was lots of search results apparently. So like, you know, you're just thinking, oh my God. And that's the, that's the kind of area you get into. And that's what I mean about like, you know, showing up on a date and actually being able to be yourself when you've been mm. told to be everything except yourself. I did a newsletter a couple of weeks ago and I put be yourself, but not like that. And I wrote mm. all these times in my life that I was told, oh, we love that about you, but not like that. I mean, you're an actor. Yeah, yeah. Like how, how yeah. much do you get rejected? And like, we love that. 
but true. be less like yourself. Like, oh, right, okay. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> you know, if you're true. embodying a character, okay, but when they're, when they're like, oh, yeah, we really want you to do that, but not like that. Yes. You know? Yeah. yeah. And mine was a lot when I was working back in the day in construction industries, a very heavily male dominated way before okay. Me Too. Yeah. And I could be pretty and funny and charming, but don't be too clever or too challenging because you don't mm. want to be too much. And, you right. know, like, yeah, just be sort of a, a, a like almost a courtesan, a corporate hospitality courtesan <laughs> and be an entertainer. Right. And, and that did a lot of damage to mm. my, not my self-esteem, but I put a lot of armor on. I yes. wouldn't be vulnerable. I was really detached for a long time and I was in my masculine mm. because I found that as a way to protect myself of course yeah because I was maybe in the, that industry as well in that environment but I found that as the way to, to really protect myself and um, it took me a really long time and I still sometimes like I say having to announce that I'm quite shy or still having to really be conscious about checking in and make sure that I am in my feminine and in yeah. a space to receive so I think it's incredibly confusing because, you know, I'm the biggest advocate for girl code. I think we should be able to be all the things. I should mm. be able to be a mother, yes. a goddess, you know, a yes. sexual creature, like um, deeply in relationship, great friendships, run my own business. Like I do believe in all of that deeply and I want my daughter to live that life with that belief. 100%. But I also know that for me, there is such an importance in genuine connection that can only happen when you're, Open. open true and i think the irony is coming to the manipulation the irony is and this is a generalization but assuming that most women want a man who has a level of emotional intelligence a level of mental capacity um a level of wherewithal within himself and is healthy mm. right has healthy intentions and wants to have a healthy relationship the irony is and i think this is why a lot of that manipulation content does so well is because if she's already at a level with that in terms of intelligence, where are the emotional intelligence, et cetera, that emotional manipulation isn't going to work mm. on the kind of man that she actually wants. Yep. And what he sees it as is, oh, wow, this is an unhealthy or toxic behavior maybe starts to question, actually, is this the kind of woman I want to invest in? Cause it could be seen as an amber or a red flag, but, the reason that content does so well is because most guys aren't at that level and that stuff works on them. Mm -hmm. But then I think ironically is, I mean, you tell me you're a woman with this experience, but the ironically is I, most women want to be with a man that they can't emotionally manipulate because I think that shows a level of capability. And it's like, okay, if I can't do that, that tells me he's a capable man that other people can't and I can trust our relationship with that to some extent. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? It's it's a really complicated one, and I I love that you're going here with it because the thing is, treat them mean, keep them keen works. Really? Yes, that's the worst thing. And every woman looking at this will be going like, yeah, it does. Not long term, I agree. Okay. But to get a reaction, like so, my friend, for example, to get stimulation, to get to get if you want to get a, a result, right? to right. get a reaction may to not get be a, the result correct i don't think again i don't think it's a good strategy if you want longevity and genuine connection I see. however if you're told this stuff enough which we are yes and you're told that you need to be you know offhand and don't be too available and you know treat them and keep them keen and, da -da -da, and like you want him to chase you and don't do this and don't do this and don't do that and you know you're like right, right. basically don't be yourself you're like right, okay like don't be honest don't say actually yeah, i am looking for a relationship and this yes. you know that's what i want and i'm not really into like casual stuff or whatever and uh, this is what i'm here for no i'm gonna be like oh i don't really care and i'm dating all these guys and like yes. chase me chase me and then don't answer you for three days and like you might i, I might get you going enough to be like oh yeah all right bit of a challenge and then yes. potentially you succeed in that challenge as you are conditioned to do hunter you know and yes. that will probably be the end of it but there is definitely a miseducation i think because short term it works yes i think i hear that i think there's a separation between reciprocating what he's reciprocating to you, mm -hmm. which demonstrates value. So for example, um, so if you, if, you know, if you start dating someone, right? And it's like, okay, we start dating and in the middle is the relationship. I take one step, mm, then you take one step. That. I take two steps, you take two steps. Now you may, you may want to take five steps, Right, And you may authentically want to do that. And I say this to my clients as well. I understand you may want to do that, 
But especially if you're operating for a place of feminine and the masculine initiates and shows the initial investment, it's about reciprocating that energy. So even though you want to take five steps, if he takes two, you take two. Mm. And I think what that does, and maybe that's part of the, maybe that's what's in the mix of <laughs> treating me and keep him keen, not being too available. Because it is true. I think when somebody is so available to us initially, mm it can make us maybe even unjustifiably so underestimate their value. I don't think that's, un I think it works both saying? ways and I think it's really valid. And that again, to me goes back to make sure your own life, your own benchmark is, mm. is strong because if there's big gaps and I've had it, like there's guys that are like, anytime I can see you anytime. You're like, Ooh, you know, yeah, like, yeah, of course, exactly. Like, why are you not, why have you not maintained good friendships? Mm -hmm. that, why are you not honoring commitments? Yes. Why are you not keeping up with family, fitness, work? You know, yes. why are you completely available? What it tells me is not necessarily that you're, I mean, yes, you're only overly available to me and I find that unattractive. But what it tells me is you're not taking care of yourself. Mm. That's what it tells me. You're willing so, to sacrifice the other important things to pedestalize me. Or you're not, um, you don't place value on them, which, which to me just, you talked about being healthy. It, to me, that shows mm. that you're not completely healthy because right. all of us to be healthy exercise you know keep up with social connections our jobs learning developing whatever that might be yes you know if you're maintaining that as well as we all can like we're all overworked and overwhelmed you know but yeah. if you're maintaining that that's quite a big chunk of your life yes so and yes as relationships develop we start integrating we maybe start meeting friends we start maybe you know start recalibrating slightly and, and changing our time but if somebody is suddenly all in available. It's that tells me that they are not anchored in healthy practices in their own life. Like they haven't got mm. healthy routines yes. that are keeping them, you know, let's be honest, the life is challenging right now. Like the world is hard. Like, yes. so if somebody's too available, that's telling me that they haven't got good, healthy routines and practices that are maintaining their sense of self. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I have a situation I'll ask your opinion on. I won't say his name to save face, but a male friend of mine, He's been, he's had, he's been involved with this young woman who, and it's just a very casual thing, very casual play, like this, they're not taking it seriously. And it's been going on for a few months now and they've both been very transparent. That's what they want, etc. But she is insisting on trying to get him to meet her friends as in like, oh, come meet my friends and then we'll go. Or um, oh, I'm going to this event uh, I really want you to come as my plus one. And it's not that he wouldn't go, but I think because, and I, maybe I see the guy side, obviously. So I guess this is why I want to ask your opinion. Because he's not dating a serious way, it's not that he's opposed to it, but it's just not a priority for him. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, we're having fun and stuff, but this isn't anything serious. So, you know, I could go and see your friends with you or I could go see my friends or I could do some work or I could spend the night in because he needs some time for himself. So, and they've had a couple of fallen outs about it. He's asking me, he's like, why does she really want to, why is she so insistent of me trying to meet her friends and almost integrate into that circle if it's not anything serious? So what do you think is going on there? Because they're coming to her heads with that. I mean, I would say if there's, if there's an opportunity, is it that she wants to develop and cultivate a friendship irrespective of sexual connection? That's one, you know, mm. does she see this as being, look, yeah, fine. Like it's, I know it's not going to be long-term, but actually, I, you know, we get on, it'd be quite nice to integrate. I want you to meet my friend just because I think you'd be a great addition. That's I think I like who you are as a person. I think you're a good addition. Kind of like hanging out with you as well. I think we could have a friendship long-term. That's one. Okay. If that's not the case, then yep. she has done bless her the mm. thing of i'm fine with this i'm absolutely fine with this i just love that we just do this here and there and that we're not in a relationship when really she you have not more. named your needs see that's what i that's what i said as well like i thought okay i think she actually wants more but she hasn't told you that but he's like every time they have a conversation she's like yeah i know it's just casual but like it's really important to me that you meet my <laughs> friends because i've told them about you x y and z interesting I yeah so then again that's like and she could have done like he's just super cool i really like hanging out with him and they're like oh wicked bring him along and it could just be exactly that which is the case of and i'm sure he'd feel totally comfortable if it was explained in that way that we yes. just see you as a value add you'd love them i know you'd really connect we'd have a really fun time like we share the same interests great yes if it's not that then yes there's a 
hope, and this is where I think women get a bad rap for being passive aggressive, <laughs> okay. but, like which is our superpower. Yes. But it's our superpower because I think we struggle so much to name our needs. Like I have been on mm. countless courses, all different kinds of things, like yeah. from very like female sexual empowerment, like orgasmic breath work, right through to relationship, obviously trauma, everything else. And yeah. the number one uniting thread for women is I don't know how to ask for what I want and I struggle to receive. And I mean that in every age, yes. every regard. So there is a possibility that she's almost like hoping by osmosis that he'll just kind of like get so used to her or meet her friends will increase her value in his eyes. Sure. By, I've got this cool job and this event will increase my value in his eyes. Yes. Maybe he'll then consider me a viable romantic partner, which he hasn't done before. Yes. I need these external things. And so- Again, my friends and I have got like one rule for life. Yeah. And the one rule for life is don't be a dick. Yeah. And that means you and them. So if yes. somebody's being a dick to you, it's like, well, obviously not. Yeah. But your friend is, bless him. It sounds like he's having the conversations, but I've done that. I've I've dated and I've been like, this will never be serious. This is not a match. Yes. I know this is never going to work. Da, 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 da. And they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then it gets to a point when you're like, oh, it sounds really cruel, but you would jump if I asked you to. So mm. I'm being a dick. Okay. I know that you like me more. Yes. I know that you are self-abandoning. Yes. I know that you would literally do anything that I asked you to. Mm. So even though on paper I have yeah. had these conversations with you, yep. I am now being a dick. Okay. So then, because I think a few, I've had this experience as well where you both can be casual and stuff and then, she wants more and then maybe you're not in the place and then she feels rejected and you feel bad because it's like, oh, why why don't I feel that way for whatever reason? So if if you're in that scenario as a guy or as a woman, to be fair, it could be, it can happen, it can happen the other way around and it does time to time, but where you're in that situation where it's a very casual thing, even though she's not explicitly said she wants more, he thinks that she does by some of these signs, mm -hmm. these behaviors, et cetera. And even though on paper, they've both agreed that it is what it is, would you say it's then on him to end things for her benefit? Or is it on her to come to that acknowledgement? Okay, this isn't going to be a relationship. I need to let go. I mean, ideally you would want the latter to happen, but sometimes, like I said, I'm giving, that's a very real example that happened to me. That person would never, and they would have just got more and more. You could just see they would have just, you know, gone along with it for just even a, I don't know, anything like a look their way. Yes. And I knew that. So if you know that, that's on you is what I would say. I think every okay. situation's different, but yeah. if you know, then you've got to take responsibility for yourselves. Like we are adults. So, yes. and, and I just think like, I quite live in the yogic way of just try and do no harm. Mm. So as much as I did all the right things and, you know, asked all the right, said all the right stuff and was very, very, very clear. Yeah. Uh, if that person, if you can just see that and you know it, like it would be cruel, you know? Yeah, it's almost being kind Correct. to, to Correct. let them go. Even if, even if it's, you know, maybe technically their responsibility to take ownership over their own decisions, it's being kind to be like, look, I recognize that this is actually something you can't do mm -hmm. because you want more. Um, speaking of that situation for yourself, what would you say, I guess you could say for you and maybe for women, mm -hmm. what, what, qualifies a guy that you just see kind of a more casual thing and a guy that you would be like, no, I want this long term. Uh, so I'm not really into casual things. So it's okay. not really for me, but um, because I'm quite uh, protective about my body. So exactly to your point, we embody, we take on you know, a man. I'm very precious about my my body and my vessel and my energy and all the things. And yes. I, I do hold myself as quite a high standard. Mm -hmm. like a Amen. Come on. High value to. woman. I we see myself to. as very high value. So like, I don't like to give myself away um, without there being sort of genuine connection. Yes. Um, and also I know and I study this and I interview people all the time. And, you know, if you ask anybody what makes a good sexual, what's a good sexual experience, it's connection. hundred percent. So then we 100%. say, but don't be too connected because it's casual. 
And you're like, mm. wow. And I actually went to a talk um, with Paul Brunson, who's the matchmaker on Married at First Sight. Yeah, really yeah. He's, uh, he's going to, well, coming, we're in chat. He's uh, going to I will message him because I know Paul. You should. I'm going to say, please come on with Kit. He's we were literally key. chatting last week. Oh, but yeah, good. definitely he's, message him. He's amazing. He's great. And he was being interviewed by my friend, Emma Louise Boynton, who you should also get on. She's epic. Okay. And uh, he said, and you can have him on to ask him about this. He yes. said, and he's like, I'm going to hang my hat on this. He doesn't believe in casual sex. He doesn't think there's any such thing as casual sex. He's like, there's too much chemistry. There are too many chemicals. There are too many things that are happening. And then I was interviewing somebody for a project of mine, which we spoke about off air. And mm. he is a holistic sex coach. And he's worked in this area for like 30 years. And he said he thinks that it's become commoditized. Hard, yeah, it has. 100%. So in that regard, you know, looking at, and, and so here's where I sit on all of this. And I'm like, not remotely prudish and I'm all for everything. Yes. I just know that if I want to have an experience and I want the best experience, I want the most pleasure. Yes. I want this to be extraordinary. That requires connection for me. Yes. It also for me to fully be in my feminine, to receive, to be in my pleasure, everything like that. Mm. I need to feel safe. 100%. I personally do not feel safe in situations that are like hook up or I don't know them. Therefore, there needs to be some kind of connection. Yes. And so for me, like, you know, maybe many years on or full circle, you're like, I'd rather, you know, know that there is um, someone that I could at least cultivate genuine respect and friendship with. Yes. Uh, and that we are completely on the same page with, but absolutely looking to relationship. And yes. for me, it only improves the more safety. Obviously, you have to have the attraction. Yes. You know, but yeah, like being in relationship with somebody who you can communicate so openly with that you can be really expressive with that there's and hopefully the romantic part is also moving alongside that but as we know Esther Perel the erotic is different to relationship yes and working that dance between the two mm. like that for me is by far and away the most satisfying of all so I completely agree in terms of the genuine connection um because I'd even say in my experience as well yeah, when I was younger, there would be, you know, maybe women I'd have a casual thing with because they're really attractive for their yeah. chemistry, et cetera. But I remember they, they got to a point where I was like, I can't, um, I just realized there was, you know, a couple of girls that maybe I was kind of involved with. I was like, wow, I actually don't like who you are as a person. Yeah. Like you're really attractive, but I actually don't like who you are as a person. And even if it's casual, you're still giving your time, your energy, you're still sharing yourself with you're that person. You're taking their energy. You're taking their energy, exactly. And so I, even if it was, you know, and I've had experiences with women where even if it was casual, there's a level of connection mm. there because you're right, that's what enriches it. So what would you say to like, for example, like a holiday romance? So where you go on holiday, let's say you go to like Bermuda or like Budapest or like Thailand and you're there for a week and let's say you meet a guy and you know, long-term, it's not really compatible. He lives there, what he does isn't gonna be able to work for what you do, etc. But you have that connection and you could have this experience together while you're having this holiday um, that adds to the value of the holiday and, and memories. Is that something you would do? Because obviously there's no longevity relationship wise, but you still have that connection that you can still have a great experience. Yeah, absolutely. Because okay. and I think as long as, here's the thing, as long as you're consciously at choice, so yes. you're not like sleepwalking into something and then damaging yourself further on. So the yes. thing that I see is, you know, you're, you've got big um, social media presence, so have I. Mm. But where do people go for quality education not clickbait mm. so where do you go to learn yeah what is good what yes. does good look like what does yes. good feel like yes and i'm not doing done social media social media has done me a lot of favors i get to meet you through social media and, and lots of other things in my life are happening and it's really really valid but i think in some regards and with sort of sex and casual dating there's a lot of sex coaches out there some are good but a lot of them are very clickbaity so they're putting out things that are quite shocking and yeah. you know all the rest of it then you then you become quite conditioned to oh well but that doesn't happen for me that doesn't work for me mm. and then you know i'm absolutely not doing down if i was in my 20s you know when the apps were really around i would have used them 100 it just yeah. wasn't like that at that time yes um you know so then you're 
having, should we call it commoditized because you need to, you need a place to do this and work it out. And a hundred percent, like a holiday romance is great for yeah. exactly those reasons. We're connected We're we've, you know, we're not in the normal environment. So probably there's a lot of all the chemistry is helping us, but also the factors of not working and yes. being, I mean, you could spend more time in a week with someone on a holiday romance than you do dating them in London for four months. So true. So yeah. actually the, yeah. if you think about building connection, yeah. conversation, communication, safety, you could do that after like two, three days in somebody's company more than you could like I say in you know three months of like do you want to make me down the pub after work on a Thursday yeah hundred <laughs> like, percent. you know and like okay. all the other things going on with it so I think the point being that I guess concerns me or I would love to see maybe shift slightly is that people are aware and they're choosing from that place so, but my yeah. god go and do all this stuff like really like yeah. I, I mean sex is a huge part of my life i'm yeah. incredibly sexually motivated i've got a very high sex drive like it's it's almost number one for me with a partner that's going to be mm. a very big part of our connection but it yes. has to be it's all about the communication and that we are going to be cultivating and working on this over time and it's very much that you know it can't be one of you instigating everything and you know so that's a really really big part in my relationship yes. and that I'm um, you know we both work on and it's extraordinary and I yeah. would I would not settle there yes and I can tell everyone listening do not settle there because again, mm. if you're in sort of mid late twenties and you're thinking about going into long term, mm. it doesn't tend to have like a massive upward spike after kids and other things that like you've got to be. And the communication is key, but just make sure that you are choosing. And again, I can say this as a woman from like a place of my deep longing that all women are able to find a way to ask for what they want. And most men want to worship you and honor you. Mm. Most men don't want to you know, yes, of course, here and there we want to be, you know, we, we embody all different energies and, and aspects and everything else. But most yes. men, I will appreciate you. You will worship me. And like, if we get into that dance, yes. it's amazing. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think there's almost, there's almost a level of pride a man has been like, my woman is taken care of mm. in all ways, in all ways. Yeah. Like there's such a level of pride and, you know, there's been, you know, Na narrative and media and you know sitcoms and stuff you know she, the wife is the smart beautiful one he's the lucky idiot to have found her or you know about you know she's not satisfied at home her husband her man can't satisfy her so maybe there's a little bit of that that makes guys extra want to go okay i want to really make sure that that's not me um but yeah there's definitely some there's definitely some pride in um you know, a man being like, yeah, I take care of my woman in, in all the ways that she needs. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But I think most women either don't know, mm. honestly, they don't even maybe know what they need. Yes. And if they do, I think there's this real difficulty, reticence, uh, hesitation yeah. to be able to share that. Yeah. And like I say, I've been on courses with mm. women of all different ages, everything. And that was universal. So if anybody's listening, feeling like this, please don't feel ashamed yeah. if this is resonating because that's the, and I think there is a huge amount of conditioning that we've come from. And I'm not even adding on like culture and religion and other things. You know, I'm just saying that we grow up being told to be a good girl and polite and not make a fuss and not make a scene and please yes. a man, and you know. And then that's where the resentment builds. That's where I stop appreciating you. That's where I start poking you to get a reaction to be seen, but I'm yes. not showing myself to you. Yes. And I love that you use the example of the relationship in the middle. I, I term it as like the bank account. Okay. Like we've both got to pay in. And we've both mm. got to pay deposits in because life will happen. Yes. You know, and we'll need to make withdrawals from time when when difficult things happen and you have to go and travel for work for three months because you've got a job in the States or something yes. and it's long distance for a while or whatever. And and we need to make withdrawals. Yes. But we've always got to make sure there's a buffer in, in our bank account we're both paying into. Yes. That when things happen, we can afford the withdrawals that we're not yeah. going into the red. Very, So I love very that true. you use that analogy. No, I appreciate it. Listen, we love it. I appreciate it. Um, let me ask you something else. Sure. Um, where is it here you go oh hmm. do men and women cheat for different reasons yes <laughs> there we go next one <laughs> no go elaborate why why do you, let's start with the men lack what, of what have you found lack of appreciation that's the main thing why do affairs happen at work in the office at work let's go back to like the office let's uh, let's pick a let's pick a because they happen you know i mean when i worked in corporate you're in the office every day yes I mean it was almost hilarious how many I mean I was much younger but it was almost funny like I remember one story that which is horrendous I'm quite tidy not quite OCD but I like things neat and tidy and organized yep 
Uh, and there was, I remember being told much later in the event that my desk was often the one that was chosen because it was always so tidy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, like, I eat my lunch there sometimes. Yes. And yeah, there was, I mean, it was happening all the time. It was like rife. Yes. And there was a theme of the guys were always a bit older, mm -hmm. uh, had sort of, I would say maybe a bit late bloomery, had probably had to work, start, not, I mean, everyone works at the same rate, but like had reached uh, a a pinnacle of their career, yes. wife and kids at home, had disconnected, were not being appreciated. Someone in the office is like, you're so amazing. You're so amazing. Mm. Now, obviously this is not like, oh, well, his wife should appreciate it more. I mean, ideally every relationship should be paying into the bank account, paying into the bank account. Yes. Because again, there's been withdrawals, young kids, lack of sleep, da, da, da. But there is someone there seeing you supposedly and appreciating you for all mm. that you are dotes on you dotes on what you say thinks feels listens, inspired just listens to listens you yeah and, and is learning from you and sees you as this like so i mean you could literally call it you could watch it yeah but i do think men and women cheat in different ways and women check out before yeah way, yeah. so again esther perel i mean it's not her i think it's gottman the four horsemen of the apocalypse but the last one being that you know how do you know like you've checked out mm. and then, you know, if you start doing the eye rolling, you're done. Like yeah. it's, so, but, but women <laughs> like, you know, so women cheat here. Yes. First, I think. And, yes. it, and it's often very emotional. Yes. And it's like, again, it's like, oh, he's, he, I'm seen by him and I haven't felt this way. And the thing that you hear, and Esther, again, this is an Esther Perel mm. and it was in state of affairs. And she said that, everyone the reason people say that they cheated is oh they made me feel alive yes so we all feel disconnected from ourselves, mm. from something mm. and then we believe it's the other person that turned the switch on but that's not what happens what's ah. happened is we've probably stopped caring you know suddenly like they you know like oh you're going down the gym all the time and you've had like your hair done and you're like oh you've you've suddenly made had a glow up yes like, what's more all this on oh it's Jamie, like, no, it's not. Yeah. It's that you, yes, maybe that person shining a light on you has made you feel that way, mm. but you've probably neglected yourself. Mm. You know, I talk about people not being healthy and maintaining those those pots. Now, yes. if your relationship is done and I'm divorced, you know, our relationship was done. We yes. reached the end of the road as romantic partners. We continue relationship as co-parents and yes. as a family. And thankfully we don't hate one another because we finished at the right time. Right. But I've seen plenty of people that have not finished at the right time when the relationship has absolutely run its course. And I think there's a buildup of resentment, female side, mm. some maybe, you know, you, I don't feel seen. There's a buildup of lack of appreciation, male side. Yes. I don't feel seen. Yes. And at some point the universe will put some, some triggers in your way. Yeah. And it's, it's whether you use that trigger to go, I need to address my stuff and myself and ch either work in the relationship or change it. When I was going through like the, um, when I knew that the marriage wasn't going well and mm. I was very, very unhappy, I was doing all of Esther Perel's work and all these courses and everything else. Cause I was trying to find something to fix the marriage. Right. What I ended up finding was a lot of information about myself that I didn't mm. know before. And the result of that, which I would say is great all round mm. is that there is no way I could be in that relationship anymore. Right. So there was never any regret about leaving my marriage. And we were able to talk about it as openly and as respectfully and cultivate the relationship that we've got, I think as a result of that. Yes. But I think what happens is people find another person that makes them feel alive and seen. And mm. we then presume it's that like, I've got two female clients at the moment, huge jobs, husbands have, you know, not been paying them attention. Guess what? two mm. guys from work who are married and mm. I'm on the other end of the phone like oh my god and I've said to both of them you know if it works out for you I, hope, I really do hope it does yes but irrespective please work on you please make your own life autonomy please set yourself up independently first and choose from there again this yeah. benchmark please choose from that place yes because otherwise again you're just outsourcing your unhappiness and you think it's another yeah and then especially when it's you know especially when it's something new of course and we i think human beings we're such imaginative storytellers that we take one little interaction mm. and we build this mm. entire narrative of what it could be and the potential and how it's going to be different than what it was before um and it's so easy to be seduced by novelty but then it's funny that no matter how much intense chemistry there was at this at one point in the beginning i think a lot 
of relationships get to the point of where the novelty has quote unquote worn off, but then you're just entering a different stage of the relationship. Absolutely. And you still should be, you know, fighting every day. I guess fighting every day for your relationship, but fighting for the relationship is almost kind of giving yourself what you need that still, like you say, kind of still helps maintain that switch that's been, that's always been on in you. It's just this person has shone a light on it. Yeah, there's you, there's me, there's a relationship. I'm going to keep working on me and bring my best self to this. Not every day. Some days I'm going to need you to step in. Of course. You're going to do the same for you. Now, if I'm the only one working on me, if you're, the, if you're just constantly taking out of the bank account, yes. that is going to wear over time. You yes. know? That's not a healthy relationship. Yeah. So obviously it's not going to continue. Yes. You know, And equally, if it was me doing it, and sometimes you're going to be low for various reasons, and sometimes I will be, and we tap in and we help each other, but there's but we're both paying in to the mm. relationship. So yeah. that's where we, you cannot be with somebody who's not prepared to do any work. You cannot be with somebody that's just taking, 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 and not giving anything back. Understandably, that's not a healthy container to be in. And I would understand why someone might think about choosing something else but please again extricate yourself out like mm. take the energy that you've been paying in and they've been taking out back into yourself first yes and then take yourself out to find something new find and again like, i've got friends that have met through extra marital and they are now very happy and it's worked but it's not been an easy path yeah so this is not a place of judgment this is just my experience and what i see with people and, and clients and work and kind of why it happens and again, I really do think there's this big link between women who maybe got into a long-term relationship, maybe men as well, mm. didn't fully sharp as themselves, kind of, you know, got it along, got it going, then get resentful. Well, yeah. you, you know, you've never asked me about this. You know, we always do this thing. It's like, but you like that in the beginning. Yes. But you liked it like that yeah, in the beginning. Yeah, exactly. It's like, well, no, I didn't actually. We never said. Yeah. You know, and then it builds. And then this person... They've always done that. They've always done. Yeah, so true. Comparison is the thief of joy. Totally. As they say. Um, oh, yeah. So this is to do with dynamics between women. I've got, I've got a few female friends who are like, objectively, they're very attractive. And they really struggle to make female friends mm. because, and they feel that some women will just hate them straight away where they feel like I've just met you, but already you hate me, especially in social environments where there's guys and there's girls and stuff. What is that about? What do you think is going on there? So it could be true. You know, there could be some truth in it that there is, um, you know, not all girls are there to polish each other's crowns. You know, some of them sure. do see you as competition and, um, they, yeah, they, they aren't open. So it could be that your friends genuinely do know when someone's green eyed and, you know, it's jealousy. Right. Other, I mean, the other thing is it could be that I think a lot of people, like we're almost all like the stray cat. So we're, we're almost all going into, if you're going into it defensive already and you're expecting someone not to be. That's a good point. Again, like I know I can be quite cold and romantic, never in friendship, like, yeah. you know, our social situations, but, you know, potentially you're not giving off the, because you're expecting to be hurt. I imagine they've both been hurt. I imagine yes. they both had females being mean to them. I imagine they both had people saying nasty things, trying to steal their guys, you know. Yes. Um, so potentially they're going into these interactions. I understand why, but armored mm. and kind of on the defensive, which means you're not open. And so right. other women in particular are probably not going to try and approach you if you're, um, giving off that energy. So, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's amazing when you do smile and yes. you know, people are, I, I, I used to have people saying to me, um, I would almost feel like I had to make more of an effort to be friendly and they'd be like, I never expected you to be like that. Interesting. So, and why do they say that? Uh, I think they make up a story that they assume you're going to be, I don't know, miss thing or, or whatever, or, um, mm. I um, would say sassy, you know? So yeah. like, I think perhaps there's a, an element of that. I think most people and women in particular, there is a special place in hell though for women that there is, <laughs> there is a special place in hell for women that like, you know, message your boyfriend or an ex that, um, you know, find other ways. And, and unfortunately this happens a lot. So yes. I do again understand yes. why 
um, that we, you know, and there's a lot of things that kind of push us into competition with one another. I mean, let's let's put a club situation in, right? Yeah. There's a table. There's men usually with money. Yeah. And then there's some women bought in to enjoy it, and yep. effectively, it's like gladiator. Like you might as well be in the arena. It's our <laughs> Roman Empire. Like, it is. It's very true. You know. So and then we're, and then we're judging on what, like, because and this is another reason to make sure that you're always financially autonomous and that mm. you can just walk away from any situation and you don't need to be a part of anything that doesn't make you feel good. Like yeah. I do not go and I would never sit at a table that I do not feel completely valued or it doesn't mean that we've got lots of friends that are very successful and I'll happily join them here or there for a drink and what have you. And, you know, lovely. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. But I can leave at any moment I want to. I could do it if I wanted to, you yes. know. So I think as well, if you're maybe in that dynamic, again, yes. you're potentially not going in as equal and, you're, and that can put you on the defensive too. So maybe they are in environments they're not completely comfortable in either would be what mm, I would suggest. Especially if it's, if they feel that they're in those environments off someone else's coattails. So it's almost like, oh, well, I have to compete further to establish my place in this environment. And maybe it can, especially, I mean, there's always going to be competition. Guys competing for women and women competing for the guys that they want. But it is interesting because I don't think guys... I don't think guys have an equivalent where they just meet, they might meet a guy, but like, oh, I just don't like him. Yeah, yeah. It's not really my cup of tea. Not yeah. my cup of tea, right. But there isn't this, and I'm just going from what my female friends have told yeah. me, this level, of, this like, and maybe it's the passive thing, like yeah. you said, being passive aggressive. So it's like, it's not overt. It's very, it's very covert, which can be, can be seen as more, I don't know if sinister is the word, because there's a level of, there's a level of shielding of, oh, I'm not directly saying I don't like you. I'm just indirectly saying you're not accepted. But also what's the dynamic? Like if we go back to like, you know, have you been casually hooking up with this guy? So you're not together, but he's invited you to this thing with his yeah. mates. And then all of a sudden, let's True. be honest, then there's like three other women there that you don't know who they are. And they seem to know him as well. And you're like, well, I can't say anything because we're not actually dating, mm. but and we're not together and I can't be a psycho, you know, so. So what would you do in that situation? Leave. Like, if it was, you're just leave but you're there for him though. Well, I'm never there for anyone. Like, <laughs> l let me tell you, like, I'm never there for anybody. Like, I do whatever I like. Like, and so, okay. yeah, no, I mean, it depends. If I was in a situation where I yes. felt like I'd been mugged off, there's no chance I'm sitting at that table. Yeah. If I felt sense. that somebody hadn't been completely open, you know, we, if we go to that, that situation, that I'm going to be out, there's a couple of girls. If they said that they're on my friends or they're like, you know, or you just don't do it. So yes. it really depends. I think sometimes these situations are not completely above, uh, not completely open from all sides. Yeah, that's true. I think that's Most fair. people are conflict avoidant. Yes. Most people are hoping for the best. Quite a yes. lot of guys are quite good at putting their head in the sand, you know, and they're like, oh, she's coming as well. Like, yeah. you know, like, oh, it's true. It's, you know, uh, and, then they leave, and then they leave the girls to sort it out. So, <laughs> yeah. That's so true. Yeah, that, that's when it becomes gladiator. That's so, so yes, funny. I would say that is our Roman empire. And um, the best thing you can do, honestly, in those situations is, be like actually girl code we are all in this together and right. just note to self i'm never doing that again yeah yeah how do um how do guys enter enter the gladiator arena when they f when they compete for women that you've seen Ooh, what have i seen but it's, it's it's kind of the old school you know it's probably it's probably a bit of a flex in some way mm -hmm. and again you can kind of see through that i think it's okay. you know and and i don't I think most people, again, are you trying to forge connection or are you trying to uh, polish your ego? Because there's two mm, very different things. If you're trying true. to get like, there's a guy who's clearly there trying to get like, you know, a round of applause and uh, like, you know, reeling off his like record of achievement from school. Like, oh, did you get a swimming badge as well? Like, yeah. well, well done. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yes, yes, Like, yeah. oh, congratulations. Like, should we also go through all the times that you, it's a bit cringe. Yes. And again, to me, that would spark insecurity. Doesn't mean he's a bad guy, but that would say to me that he's quite insecure because he's kind of seeking validation and approval. And I do get that. Sorry to cut you off. But I think, is there, you know, we're talking about the caliber mm -hmm. versus quality. And because a lot of women want a high caliber guy, is there not him trying to demonstrate I am this caliber of man? If a man's caliber, you can tell. You don't need to. It's true. Don't need to he, I, it's true. Like the richest person in the room doesn't need to wear the most, the flashiest stuff. Exactly. They usually don't. No, they don't. That's and actually if you, very if true. You can tell. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, that's very true. So I think that it's the people insecurity. that are, yeah. I, I was reading, it's a really good book as well. I think you'd love it. It's called The Psychology of Money. It's always in like the kind of top um, 10, okay. it's been out a few years. Yes. He talks in it. It's very good. I wish I'd read it in my twenties. Just generally very helpful. Okay. But he talks in it about how he used to be a valet in LA. So right. he used to park all the beautiful cars and he used to get used to chatting to people. And so he said, you know, someone would pull up in a Ferrari and he'd be like, oh, and he's like, 20 year old kid working for tips and you know and so the guy getting out of it got the reaction that he wanted yes but then over time you start getting to know the clients right mm. the wealthiest people are driving like a three-year-old super reliable whatever yes like mega wealth yes might have a nice car here and there on certain saturday nights and whatever and being driven by someone yeah but the, he's told a story about this guy that had the ferrari who he got to know and then one day didn't turn up in it because it had been repossessed because it was on finance and actually he's renting an apartment like not in a great part of the city because it was literally just for that reaction yes and that in itself is going to make you feel more empty because you know you're kind of propping it up on nothing it's going to make you feel even more insecure so true it's a horrible feeling please so don't do true. it yeah please don't do it it's so true and you, you know that's where keeping up with the joneses come from isn't it you're trying to maintain this this perception mm. of level that you haven't gotten yet that's not saying it can't be in your journey um but yeah it's almost it's like it feels like almost everything we do is down to status and reproducing we want to be in a better position to gain status or to reproduce and or have sex with the people that we want mm. ultimately that's so power interesting. it's all about power so money and power but ultimately if you've got money you have power so it's yeah, yeah. They say, what was it? That phrase, they say, everything is about power, but power is about sex yep. or something. Well, what yeah. sex is about power. Because if you've power. got power, it's everything. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. Um, I'm going to switch gears for this last part. And you don't have to share this if you don't okay. want to. How often do new clients try and ask you out? So I've got better at working out <laughs> what a uh, what someone's intentions are. Okay. Early on. So I actually had um, an email last night that was way too detailed for someone. And then it was, da -da 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 -da, like, I mean, it sounds terrible, terrible trauma, ter all this bad stuff, had all this help, uh, seen my work, thinks I can help. Mm. So I'd really like to meet you in person. Delete. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. That's so that that last part. You oh, were it just was like, it was too much detail. I mean, if that's really happened, it's very sad, obviously. Okay. Um, but there is no requirement to meet me in person. Yes. I do Zoom calls. I do do I do do trauma sessions in person in places where you know when I go to New York and LA and and I do do some in London. But yeah, there was. Uh, uh, you know, the only way that you could be cured is by meeting me in person. Mm, no, mm. if you see me on a night out, it's not going to cure you. You're going to re-traumatize you. So no. <laughs> it's going to re-traumatize. You're not ready for this, yeah, my you're guy. you're not ready. You're not ready to handle this you're not yet. Ready. Especially if all of this is true. You're definitely not yeah. ready for me. <laughs> so, but you know, I was reading it, reading it, reading it. And so I think I've got better now with the, because I am, gen you know, to do the work I do, I am very empathetic. Mm. Like I am, you know, I really am. But I've got much better now at just being like, <gasps> No. Like, okay. And I had another guy who was like, I need to, and I don't offer like trial sessions. You either book with me and have a call. Like I'm credible enough. I've done this long enough. You know, and yes. it's not arrogance, but again, it's gatekeeping for me. Like, it, cause it of means course. someone's committed to wanting to do the work. Completely oh, I just really, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. And like, check she's, yeah, like you can't hear me. Um, mm. He was definitely wanking on the phone. Definitely. No. Definitely. How yeah. did you know? Uh, I, you, you know, straight away, you're like, the, the breath pattern was a bit off for talking. <laughs> and then I was like, it, it's not the first time. And then I was just like, bang, because it says in my terms and conditions, like any inappropriate behavior or if you come to a call drunk or anything like that. And I was just like, done. That is, and guess well, what? how far along was that? That oh, wasn't the first minutes. session. Yeah, no, minutes in. No, no, but that wasn't the first yeah. session though. The first session? Mm -hmm. He booked online, paid online. And was, his, was he asking questions that you were like, hmm, or was it mainly the breath? Just hearing well, he was his... talking and he asked to put the camera on as well. And I was just like, absolutely. And I just suddenly, my brain was like, absolutely not. And guess what? He never followed up and was like, oh, we got cut off. Or that was always the end of the session. I could have a refund. So yeah, my intuition was right. Oh my God. I mean, I love, I mean, it makes sense where you'd have terms and conditions for conduct. Mm -hmm. It's funny because as a guy, like most of my clients are female. I have some male clients, but I don't think I'd ever need, <laughs> need the terms and conditions for conduct. <laughs> 
<laughs> for the court. You never know, my darling, is what I would say. That's so funny. Oh my, I mean, not, I mean, funny. It's funny to think about. Wow. Did that, does it surprise you though? I mean, you know, attractive women got a lot going on, especially guys that come to you, they're being vulnerable, in which we know that's how a lot of men, it's hard for him to be vulnerable. It's quite expensive for him. Probably would have done it on OnlyFans. But. I mean, maybe good. Po- he probably searched. Does she have OnlyFans? Like, let me check really quick. I but always I'm, joke about that. I'm like, if it all goes, if it all goes sideways, I'll do OnlyFans. Just do like, OnlyFans, yeah, Nanny. Like, don't do, do it to yourself, no, please. I mean, don't. It's a joke. I'll have to call you up and I'll tell Amber. Yeah, an intervention. Like, yeah, Inter- an absolute intervention. intervention. Kit staging an intervention. Kit and what, Paul come what? round. Hundred <laughs> percent. Me and Paul will be there. Be like, absolutely What's not. What's going on, baby? You're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you okay? He'll be the good angel. I'll be the, I'll be the bad one. He'll be like, oh, I'm I'm really concerned about it. I'll be like, Ali, what the fuck are you doing? (laughs) Sorry. She's plugged in. Oh, she's got plugged in. Um, (laughs) That's so funny. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I was like, fairly expensive for you to do that. So, I mean, that was a, that's the first time that's happened in this job. I don't think that's probably the first time it's happened in my life. Yeah. What about when they've been a, a consistent client. So it's a few, it's been a handful of sessions mm. in, they're doing the work and stuff. And it just gets to a point where they're just like, I just think she's, I mean, they obviously think you're amazing because they wouldn't book with you anyway. But what about halfway through? It's, I think it's easier to cut it off from the beginning because like, okay, cool, you're just here for that. Yeah. But what if they grow feelings and attachment to you? I and- haven't had that. I haven't had that with any of my client clients. I okay. think, you know, I think we have good boundaries and I think it is obviously very professional. And mm. even if that was maybe some, a way that some of them felt, that's not been anything that's been expressed. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's been, interesting. And it's, you know, very formal. And usually we're going like very deeply into their personal and private lives. I think there is something to be said for, obviously they're amazing male coaches, male clients. But I think sure. men... The men that I work with, who are probably like mid, late 40s, 50s, I think they find it easier to say some of the things to a female client, but I can be in my masculine. You know, I do swear I'm quite matter of fact. Mm. I, you know, I've got a lot of experience in this area. Like I've sat on, I sit on boards myself. I've sat on boards. So I yes. think I kind of um, embody that, you know, I'm a safe place to talk to. That maybe they'd feel ashamed speaking to a man. They don't need to, but perhaps they would find it harder being vulnerable, like crying on a call. Yeah, very of openly. course. I get that a lot, you know, and I, and I always say, and they're like, you know, and everyone apologize when they start crying. And I'm like, please don't. Yeah. But I'm really honored that we've got this space that you feel that you can do that with They me. can do that. I'm never going to judge. And so I do think that that is um, the relationship that we build. Which yeah, is nice. that's great. Yeah, of course. And I guess it's almost sometimes easier for people to share very personal things with, and I say this nicely, a stranger yes. than someone who, who's really close to them because they're like, okay, I know this person sees me this way. So if I disclose this information, it's it so might change. It's so true. Like when I've been, again, you know, going on some of these courses or like retreats and you go when you're not in a great place, right? Mm-hmm. Generally speaking, like I'm hosting some retreats and I anticipate to have people there who are not in a brilliant place. And that's yes. actually like, please come and know that other people are there too. And I forged, I've just literally come back from Mexico with two girlfriends. Yeah. One I met, in that place, both going through a divorce at the same time, both ex- we're all exactly the same age. Like yes. my own friendship group wasn't available to me in that way because they just simply weren't, you know, they were supportive, but they weren't going through what I'd gone through and, yep. and at the same time. And I think there is exactly what you say. People are wedded to a version of you, or mm. if you're trying to transform and change, a lot of your friends struggle with that, that you're going to be less available or different or doing something else. And yes. I have said things and admitted to things in rooms of strangers that I've never said out loud. Mm. And there is such power in that. And I love that you've named that. So that's what, yeah. you know, coaching with you, I know is same with me. Yeah. Um, you know, I have people on the call, that have, like I said, have admitted to an affair, to this, to that, the other. And I'm like, look, never, and the same with you, never any judgment. Like 100%. I just want the best for you. Like I'm yes. going to be a cheerleader for you and just make sure that you are, you know, on the right path for yourself and yes. hold that space. But there's no judgment. Like, let's just make sure that you are as fulfilled and living your most authentic life that's yeah. possibly available. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, just to round us off, what's, and this, this is a difficult question because obviously a lot of, a lot of things are very tailored to certain situations. What would be your one piece of advice for the masses of men who are struggling to date the kind of women they would like to be involved with? And what's your one piece of advice for the women who are also struggling in that area? So I'll go women first. Yep. Get to know your needs, Mm. find a way to communicate them because Mm. I, I think we're not doing that. And that's two pronged and genuinely really get to understand what your needs are. Find peace with that. 
Yes. It probably isn't the same as your friends and other people or society. Yes. And then find a way to communicate and own that and embody it. Nice. Love that. And then for the men, try and hold and encourage that space. Just knowing mm. how hard it is for us mm. to be able to communicate our needs. If you want to really connect and you really want to f have that deep relationship, but also with, you know, a woman of value or anything else, yeah. try and find ways of creating, we'll call it safety or whatever you want, questions, even anything mm. to encourage that person to share with you. Mm, and the best way to do that is by starting off being vulnerable yourself. Interesting. Very well said. We love that. Annalie, thank you so much for sharing your energy with us today. We it. appreciate you. Um, if people want to find you, where can they find you? So the biggest channel um, is Instagram, which is at Annalie Howling. Also have a TikTok, which is the same. Perfect. Um, I have YouTube, which is Annalie Howling. And then my website is AnnalieHowling.com where there's retreats. I want to get you on one. Perfect. Uh, yeah, we're going to do some stuff in London as well coming up in New York um, and some guides and things that people can work themselves through in a relationships masterclass course. Awesome. Go check that out. Show some love. Also, she's got something, something pretty big coming in the next few months, which we can't say yet, which is sign that it's pretty special. Um, so definitely look out for that. But we appreciate you coming on. Thank you for sharing your time with us today. Guys, go show us some love. Give us some likes. Give us some follows. Check her content out. I definitely co-sign on everything that she spouts. She's pretty amazing, as you've told, can tell from this conversation. So thank you for tuning in, guys. And I will see you in the next episode.